Okay, so let's see what happens then if I don't want to approximate my function just around zero, because zero is boring, right? Let's approximate it around any value we like, any value we like, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's approximate, let's stick with this, let's stick with sine of x, because we've already done the groundwork, right? Okay, but this time I want to approximate it around some particular value. So I'm just going to say a. Let's say that a is just like, I don't know, pi by 2, it could be 3 pi, it could be negative 4 pi, it doesn't matter, okay? It's just some particular value. And I'm going to see what happens if I try and approximate it using Taylor series. So, first things first, I set it up in exactly the same way as before, okay? So I find all my derivatives. Now, actually, just for speed, I'm just going to copy those derivatives straight down. So the first one is just my function. My first derivative is just equal to cos. My second derivative is just equal to a negative sine. And my third derivative is just equal to negative cos. Okay? And I could carry on going like this, but just to illustrate. Okay? Now, before we were sticking it around x equals 0. That's the reason why we stuck 0 into each of those values. It shouldn't make a difference, though. If we choose a different value, we should still just stick that value into each one of these. Like, it makes sense that I want the value of my function, so my first term, to be exactly the same as my approximation, okay? Uh, the second term of my approximation should be exactly the same as my gradient, should be exactly the same as my tangent line, okay? The third, the third term of my approximation should be the same as what happens if I try and approximate a quadratic to my function. The fourth term should be the same as what happens if I try and approximate a cubic to it. Does that make sense? Okay. So it should just be exactly the same as just sticking 0 into each of these. So in other words, I get f of a, so that would just be equal to sine of a. In fact, let's choose a particular value rather than generalizing it. Let's go with pi by 2. Make it easy. Okay. So we're going to stick pi by 2 into this function. So what is the sine of pi by 2? It's equal to 1, right? Uh, and then what happens if I stick pi by 2 into my first derivative? So what is the cos of pi by 2? Sorry? Good. And then what happens if I stick pi by 2 into my second derivative? Good. OK, and what happens then if I take my third derivative? I stick pi by 2 in, so what is the same as negative cos of pi by 2? What's that equal to? 0. Does that make sense? So I'm doing exactly the same thing over here. I'm just choosing a different value to approximate it around. All right? Now, here's where we need to be careful. When we come to our approximation here, we're no longer sticking 0 into my function. What we're really sticking now is a in. So if you think about it, um, think about something like this. How do we solve this? OK, good. Square, uh, square rooting both sides. So x minus 2 equals 0. OK. So what must x be equal to? 2. 2. In other words, x equals 2 is my root, but my factor is x minus 2. So in the same principle, if x equals pi by 2 is the value that I'm sticking in, then I'm saying that my factor should not be uh, just x, it should be now x minus that. Does that make sense? Yeah? Think about it like this. This was my root, this was my factor. If you think about it the same kind of way, I'm using x equals pi by 2. That's what I'm sticking into my value. That's what I'm sticking into my function. Okay? So when I come over here, this no longer is x anymore. It's x minus pi by 2. Does that make sense? So, OK, I'm basically saying that f of x now, around a, OK, should be approximately equal to f of a plus f of a. And ordinarily, I'd put an x here. But because I'm approximating it around a, or pi by 2 in this case, I would say that's minus a. So I'm generalizing it first. And I'm going the same kind of thing. So my first derivative around a divided by uh, 1, 2 factorial. Is that right? Wait, no, that's that's derivative. Divided by 2 factorial, okay, times by x minus a all squared, plus the third derivative around a, divided by 3 factorial, 
times by x minus a all cubed. This is the adaptation that I need to make to my formula, which was over here. Okay? So it's an adaptation now. It's no longer just x, it's now x minus a. That's my factor. Okay? So if I use this up here, a is just pi by 2. A is just pi by 2. Okay? So what that means then is that f of x approximated around pi by 2 is going to be f of a, which is just 1, plus f prime of a, which is just 0, times by x minus a, plus the second derivative of my function around a, which is negative 1, divided by 2 factorial, or just 2, times by x minus a all squared, plus the third derivative of my function approximated around a, which is just 0, divided by 3 factorial, times by x minus a all cubed. And I carry on like that. In fact, because I'm carrying on infinitely, I should really put an equals there, but a small matter of notation. So does that make sense? Like, all I'm doing here is I'm taking what we looked at before. I looked at 0 initially because it was easier, right? But now we're looking at a more advanced or an adaptation of this. In other words, not just around 0. What happens if I choose it around any value I like? So I center my approximation around a different value. Okay? Then it's just a small adaptation. I just have to consider this. Is that okay? Questions? I have a question. Yes. If this goes to infinity, does it cancel out? Uh, yeah, so if it goes to infinity, that should be equals. It shouldn't be approximately equal to. If it stops at any point, then it's only approximation. Ah, I see what you're saying. Because you're centering it around a different point. Yeah, but yes. it goes to infinity, so yes. two might be the same. Yes, exactly. So if you're going off to infinity, these two will be the same. But in reality, we don't use this to go off to infinity. Okay? We use this to like approximate it around some particular region, which is why we need to consider that. But that's a good question. Yeah, fantastic.